Alright everybody, welcome back to Rhyme of the Frostmaid. When last we left you guys, you had traveled back to the town of East Haven after learning about a Dwergar plot. You had learned that in the city or village of Kaer Connick about missing things that had been happening. Uh, crystalline pieces of something uh, referred to as Shardlin, crystal shard that was an ancient uh, fragment of a large crystal that had sort of evil magical properties was uh, being stolen pieces of it by invisible infiltrators. You learned from apparently one of the sons of a Twergar lord named Mildar Sunblight that they were gathering these materials in order to bring back to their father that was devising some sort of terrible construction uh, to raid and destroy uh, the Ten Towns. The um, You further found one of the other sons uh, in the uh, East Haven Ferry and defeated him, although learning that uh, in that in that process, learning the location of his uh, father's keep, uh, a dwergar by the name of Zardok Sunlight. Unfortunately, in that battle, you lost our dear friend Toot, who was turned into stone and then sunk to the bottom of the uh, of the lake. Um, the group carried onwards, heading towards uh, Zardok Sunlight's keep. On the way, encountering a way there into the spine of the world mountains traveling into the deep deep uh, wilderness encountered a large crag in the ground filled with haunting laughing sounds and demonic uh, hyena like noises as well as tortured humanoid sounds um, you also saw a um, a uh, Goliath woman that was being surrounded by several of these and then drugged down into a cave on the opposite side of the ravine after blasting them off with some sort of magical energy. Running down in to investigate, you found several of these creatures dragging the woman into a deeper part of the cavern in a room filled with bones and several others that were seemingly either sacrificing or devouring a human person in an opposite room. Rushing in to save her, you managed to knock uh, knock out most of the immediate demonic creatures that you've seen. But as you did so, as she's finally become free, a much larger, uh, similarly appearing creature, except this time in uh, white fur, came from another cavern and barked out at all of you in common, basically saying, enough, I'll end this. And that's where we find you all. While you're trying to figure out behind all of this, the uh, rhyme of the Frost Maiden that has set the world into this never-ending winter that's being besieged on all sides by different threats, most currently the Dwergar threat. And I'll bring you there now as we find ourselves in this deep cavern filled with these demonic creatures that some of you may know as gnolls. Okay. I'm going to have everybody re-roll me initiative. You're at where you're at. Harkus is out of play today. He had headed around the bend, so we're just going to move him out of play for a second. Leonard, you're heading around the bend to the opposite side where you heard humanoid voices coming from. Correct. Ordella has initiative. Guitara has initiative. Oh, I I thought I clicked me, but I didn't. 16. I'll add you. Thank you. It's going to take me a minute to get all the baddies in, too, so. Yeah, I forgot to do the same. I had That's four. okay. I got you, Jonathan. Let me find where you're at. Guitara, were you with us last session? I don't think you... No, I wasn't. 
And I'm not so, seeing anything either in Roll20. Yeah, because you are you weren't there last time, so I'm going to bring your character into the fracas. Okay. Let me grab Yatara and bring him in. All right, Yatara, I'm going to put you kind Ooh. of... You can bring him in where I am. I'm probably going to need some help. I'm going to put him smack dab here in the center of this room. The large creature was only seen by Leonard and by Harkas, and I think by uh, Zaharia. The uh, Leonard, you're at 16. Keep trying to enter that. It doesn't do. And Yatara had a four. Yeah, you had entered the other room where the uh, creatures that were sort of eating the human were at? Yes. Roll that one. Chizaka rolls an 18. Let me roll the others here. Ooh, good rolling. Okay. Starting off is this guy. Leonard, I don't know if you can even see. Maybe you can. Leonard, at the end of your vision, you see a cage filled with at least two human creatures. There is a bony looking, almost undead appearing, uh, similar. Uh, hyena looking creature it carries what looks like a staff before it and uh, it's going to step forward towards you and raise its staff oh I thought that was a dog it's not a dog it's sort of as an undead looking thing that seems to be carrying a staff Uh, and it's going to raise up its staff at you and sort of slam it down into the ground and I need you to make a constitution saving throw, please. Ooh. Constitution. 18. Hey, that's going to pass. You're going to take uh, four thunder damage as this wave of force blasts out at you and you brace yourself and you're not knocked over, but uh, it still hits you with some decent amount of force. Uh, Ordella, you are in this room with these two guys. I didn't roll their initiatives. Let me give their initiative a quick roll here. Slow. 12... Not your sword. Your so- your flying sword, your dancing sword is out. I'm going to say that you have, like, reset usage of the flying sword, so... Let me just make sure these guys don't roll a higher initiative than you. 17. They did not. Alright, so Ordella, you're up. You're in this room. There's two of them in a mostly dead human creature on the altar thing there. Okay. Um, what, what do you do? I have my dancing longsword out already. You do. Uh, I'm just I'm sort of giving to... you the reset because I don't know how many strikes you had left on it or what, so we're just going to assume you've got four bonus actions. To yeah, use. I don't think I used it yet. I think I was able to get it out. I don't remember. Okay, honestly. that's fine. Okay, I'm going to come up here and attack this one on the right Okay. with my great axe. Hopefully. Uh, 12 is a this? miss. You're, uh, you deflect off of its armor. Okay. And second hit. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a two on the dice. That's going to be a big old miss. And then uh, I just get one hit with the dancing longsword, right? Yes. Okay. Make one attack. Yeah, that'll hit. Which yeah. one were you going after? Um, the one on the left that I'm not next to. Okay. 
So you're trying to like separate them and keep them both busy. One with your yeah. dancing sword. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a hit. Go ahead and roll that okay. damage. It's basically a one-handed hit. No. Okay. Ooh. Well, what is it? Yeah, that's weird. There, there it goes. goes. Ten. 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 Okay. All right. So it looks beat up a bit. The uh, big guy that stepped forward and said, enough, it is his turn. And what's he going to do? How far is that? 30 feet across. 40 feet. That's a long jump. I don't think he can make it. What would he do? And it's like 70 feet down. And charge around the corner. Yeah, that's probably what he would do. He would probably charge around the corner because... Uh, Zaharia's character is kind of there. He'd probably head that way. He'd probably dash. He can dash 50 feet. No, he can dash 60 feet. Let me check his movement. He may be able to dash better than that. Sorry, it's really slow. This, uh, this board is just too big and unwieldy, I'm afraid. His movement is 30, so he can dash 60. Okay. So that's what he's going to do. He can get kind of around to there. Not quite up on uh, Zaharia yet, but he sort of dashes around the corner heading towards you. Uh, up next, it is the ones surrounding Ordella right now. Uh, this one is dealing with your dancing sword, and I think it's going to slash at the sword yeah. with a glaive. 23, I assume, hits the sword. I'm not sure how that works. Like, Okay, I'll tell you. So, um, the sword has an AC and HP. Um, let's see here. How does bonus action cause the sword to take one control? No, it doesn't. It doesn't say. Interesting. You can use a bonus action to toss this magic sword in the air and sweep the fan where when you do so it begins to hover, fly, bonus action five feet within it. Flies up to thirty feet, trust return to your hand. Okay. So it's uh I'm not gonna hold if you were going to homebrew it, I think what you would do is use the animated sword stats, you know, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to say he just sort of pushes by it since he can't really target it and is going to just go after you with that 23. Of course. So that's 12 slashing damage. Ew. Well, one of his attacks missed. Leonard, you're up. You just saw this withered looking thing. Uh strike at you. Okay. Leonard is... Can I can I get an idea of if this is something that is going to, like, murder me, or if I stand a reasonable chance? Like, is there... Can I make a roll to decide if it's just going to wreck me and I should run? I think that's an insight roll. Yeah. Sounds reasonable. Okay, let me make an insight roll on this one. Yep. Insight. Uh, that's a five. All right. Leonard, uh, uh, you've seen worse things. Okay. 
All right. Then, then with a five. Going... With a five. You've seen worse things. Yeah. No, I got this. I got this. All You're right. gonna die. <laughs> so with a five, I'm going to target it and cast catapult. Okay. DC 14 deck save for 30 damage, and I'm going to move back this way toward other people. What are you uh, catapulting at it? Uh, just a rock, like a, a piece of ice that I. That's, that's a lot of. Ooh wee. Uh, in his horrible decks, it's minus one decks. 13, that's a fail, does 13 damage. All right. Uh, what you notice is that, like, part of it's like collarbone and a couple of ribs go, just break off and go flying backwards. And it just sort of looks up at you and its eyes glow red. All right. All right. And you're moving back. Yeah. It, it is the other hyena creature next to next to Ordella's turn who is going to I guess slash at Ordella twice with a glaive of course ah ha Seven, 17 and 17 yeah 8 and 12 I'm down Ordella drops. Mm-hmm. Okay. Zaharia, you're up. I'm trying to find my special second wind. As a bonus action, um, can I cast Spiritual Weapon? And I'm going to place it right in front of this thing, so right in front of me. Um, and it appears essentially as the symbol of my god. So it's like the double ended uh, battle axe. So you've got the heads of each side of the battle axe. Okay. Uh, okay. And. Uh, go ahead. I was just thinking I'd, I need a symbol for your spiritual weapon. Okay. But go ahead. Uh, so it, I think, gets to attack as soon as it goes out. Uh, when you cast a spell, you can make a melee. Yeah. Perfect. All right, so... Yeah, a seven's not going to do it, unfortunately. I think that was the damage. Hang on, I think I did that okay. wrong. Yeah, that's a D8. That's no good. Yeah, sorry, here is the to hit. That's better. That'll do it. That'll hit okay. for seven uh, damage. All right, and then that was just my bonus action. Um, and because I've now done damage to it, I'd like to toll the dead. And right now I'm displacing because I haven't been hit this round. So essentially, um, you kind of see the displacement of my shield almost reverb even more so as if it's like sound waves coming off of it. And you hear uh -huh. this, the gong as it kind of pushes forward uh, into this thing. Okay, so that's a saving throw, right? Yes, it's a wisdom save. How wise are they? Okay. This is the big boss, so... A little wiser than the others, but maybe not the wisest. Your demon-worshipping nasties. 18. Uh, that passes, so it does not take any damage. However, um, I'm hearing things back behind me, and this thing's large, and while I would not admit it to anybody... I'd kind of like to be closer to other people that are fighting these things than just being out here on a ledge by myself. So seems reasonable. If I, uh, we'll get to, I think I can get there. And that's the end of my turn. Okay. I'm just downloading a quick uh, double headed battle axe while talking or trying to okay uh kind of like granite guts you heard probably the pained screams of uh ordella as she met her uh, met her doom on the uh in the in the icy room ahead of you what i'm not dead it? yet i'm not dead yet i did what, indeed uh what so, so i'm gonna charge in there to try to big be a big damn hero 
Um, and I'm going to leap up onto the side of this um, beer and then uh, with, uh, let's see, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cast um, Sanctuary on Ordella. Okay. For a bonus action. Okay. And then I oh. am... Ordella's dancing sword is lying on the ground. And then I am going to um, swing at the monster that is closest to Ordella there that's right in front of her with uh, Dust Crusher. Okay. Yeah, 24 will hit. The one right across from her. Yes. For uh, one handed or two handed? Um, two handed. Okay. He's not undead, so ten. And okay. then did I'm you have any extra damage? Um, and I um, can we say I ignited the head? Yeah, I mean that's how it always. Well, does, that's but... a that, but that's a plus to the attack. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and make the second attack. Okay. That hits? Yes. Two ended the same one? Yes. Okay. All right. He's uh, bloodied. And I'm going to stay right here and uh, try to fend these things off uh, from Ordella. You know, for dead, she looks a healthy sort of dead for the moment. <laughs> and so that's, we're going to see how this just goes. Mostly dead. <laughs> mostly dead. Yatara, you're up. Yeah, since last time, did we take a rest? Uh, yes. Did we? Yeah. Was it short or long? Long. Okay. You're fresh. I guess I just got beaten up. You got all yeah. You got the shit kicked out of you. Yeah. Uh, you got all your spell slots, Guitara. You're you, Guitara. You you've been picking daisies the entire time while these people have been defending, and like you feel refreshed and ready to go. It's like, hey guys, what's up? Yeah. Guitara, you, your mind. But first of all, Guitara, before you go, I need you to roll me a quick wisdom save. For favor. <laughs> Guitara, your mind is just clouded. And your judgment is a little bit impaired because you just hear the blaring voice of that crystal skull in your head saying, not a Lloyd down, not a Lloyd down, alert, alert, alert. It is just louder than it has ever been since you've headed in this direction. Uh, you're able to shake it off a little bit, but uh, it's making things maybe a little bit more challenging for you than otherwise would be. Okay. But go ahead. All right, I'm going. I'll to... tell you what effects that have when you are on it. Okay, awesome. Um, I'm going to follow Cadillac and but kind of hang out in this little corridor right here. Um, which one of these on the right or the left that was that looks most beat up? Cadillac has been waylaying the right ones. Okay. Please don't cast fireball. There's not enough people in here yet. I'll save that for later. <laughs> uh, the one that's looking pretty bad, I'm just going to go ahead and, and hit it with a uh, magic missile. In here. Okay. Oh, man. Was that pop? Give me just a moment. You can tell me my... I'm having to refresh roll 20 real quick. No worries. This page is unwieldily large, and it's killing me. You've got to be kidding me. <sighs> Reloading, I'm sorry. Roll 20 crashed. 
course it did. Would it be rolled 20 if it didn't? I don't know. Uh, magic missile hits automatically, so you can... Uh, the damage was... Sorry, I forgot one. Four, eight... Oh, five, so that's... Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen... So 15, did I do that math right? And a 20? Okay. 20. So we got 2, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Wait, where's the 20? So we got 5 and 4 is two 9. Fives, 2 fours and a 2, right? Where's the second 5? Uh, down at the oh. bottom. Okay. 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 I didn't see that one. Okay. Got it. I didn't see the second five. That's why I was at fifteen. Uh, yeah, he looks terrible. He's not dead after all that, but he's looks terrible. Like minimal HP. Oh my lord! It's almost unplayable. Are y'all having as much problems with Roll20 as I am? I guess I'm the only one that's having I don't it. think so. Fine for me. It's okay on my end. Maybe I need to try a different browser. It's Chrome. Y'all use Chrome? Mm-hmm. I'm yep. actually on Edge. It just crashed again, is all. Ooh. You got a dozen windows open? No. Not all the way down? <laughs> yeah, not all the way down. <laughs> we found the secret. Yeah, just the secret to winning is crash the DM's Chrome. Oh, if Toot was here, he could have told us a joke during this downtime. If only. If only. He could have. Um, I wonder if the giant lady knows any jokes. Someone ask her. <laughs> I don't think she's the joke. Hey, sword. lady. <laughs> the withered, the withered-looking thing uh, moves forward towards you, Leonard, and it looks sort of angrily at you and raises its staff up again. Again. Yeah, it's its turn. And points its staff at you and says something in some sort of gibberish -y language. And make a wisdom saving throw, please. Okay. Let's see, wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. I am mm -hmm. not very wise. Well, you're a robot. Oh. 17. Oh, okay. A wise robot. <laughs> uh, you pass that, and uh, nothing happens. Good. Nothing happens. Ordella, hmm. you're up. You're up, Ordella. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I'll allow you to second wind yourself. Okay. Because that's a Literally. bonus action you could have done. So. Uh, yeah. So Ordella, right us. quick. Um, the sanctuary spell I placed on you. Um, uh -huh. sh should you wake up, uh, you're shielded from any sort of attack unless the attacking creature does a um, wisdom save. Um, mm -hmm. but it the uh, spell breaks if you attack anything. So just FYI. Okay. So it's a second win that was regaining. Yes, it's a D10 HP. plus. It's a D10 plus your fighter level, I think. Okay. Do I just like click it? Oh, sweet. Roll. Sorry, I accidentally clicked it twice. So yeah, you have 15 hit points. Or whatever. Which, uh, I'm sorry, the first one you rolled, yeah, I guess. Yeah, first one was 11. 11 hit points. Okay. Okay. So you're up. What uh -huh. do you do? That's a bonus action. My mouse isn't working very well. Um... All right, you said if I attack, then I can't. Then it'll, my shield will go away? Uh, correct. 
Poopies. What does the shield give her? Um, creatures warded against attack until the spell ends. Any creature who targets a warded creature um, via attack or harmful spell must make a wisdom saving throw. On a fail save, the creature must choose a new target or lose the attack. Oh, okay. So they have to go after Granite Guts, basically. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, sadly, it does not protect you against area effects such as, for example, a fireball. <laughs> ah, of course not. Yeah, that, that's a cat catastrophe there, I know. Well, how's, yeah, I know, right? How's this guy on the right looking? Uh, bad. Real bad. bad. Okay. Well, since I have 11 hit points, I think I'm going to get up and start kicking this butt. I hope. Fingers crossed. Um, how's my dancing longsword? Is that... Uh, it was on the ground. You can pick it up now. Raise it up. Uh, you okay. probably can't do it this turn because uh, it takes a bonus action. Okay. You've already used your bonus action. Okay. All right. Well, then I will just attack him with my great axe then. Hopefully that hits. Uh, you rolled a 19. That hits. Mm -hmm. And 12. 12 slashing, that kills that guy. Good. And then the other guy. What was the roll? I'm sorry. 15. Uh, 15 is a hit. Yes. For nine. Does nine. Okay. Uh, the big boss is up. And he's going to push past your spiritual weapon. You can use it to make an opportunity attack if you like. Because he's just rolling past it towards you. Sure. I didn't know I could do that. Uh, you can't by the rules, but I think that the, I think the homebrew rule of allowing him to make opportunity attacks seems logical to me. Okay. Uh, yeah, that'll that'll do it. 11 damage. Uh, he's up on you. And he's going to strike at you. Oh, he doesn't have any weapons. Interesting. And right, he's going to bite at you. Critical fail. And then he's going to claw at you twice. He's going to gum you. Oh, man. 11 and a 6. Two critical fails. I assume an 11 doesn't hit. No, and he would have disadvantage because of displacement. Yeah. So. All right. The uh, angry creature up at the top is going to glaive at uh, Granite Guts. That's a crit, Granite Guts. No. Oh, 13 slashing to you. You looking okay, Granite Guts? Um, I've looked better, but I've also looked worse. Fair enough. Leonard, you're up. Hello? Kenny, you there, Kenny? Sorry, I'm. Thank I'll just cool. stay unmuted. I'm talking. Uh, so I'm going to cast my fire bolt. Okay. At the guy I'm chasing. Okay, the the withered looking thing. Yes, this or the guy who's chasing me, and then yeah. I'm going to move back to here. Uh, seventeen is a hit, and. You blast, like, several of its ribs out. Good. Uh, it's still on its feet. And slowly continuing to, like, maraud towards you. Zaharia. Is it Zaharia or Zaria? Zaria, but she'll answer to either. <laughs> okay. She'll just roll her eyes with one. She yeah. didn't know if the H was silent or not. It Zaria. Is. It is Zaria. All right. Zaria. Uh, bonus action, I can't actually get to it, but um, I'm going to go ahead and move the... I don't think I can move the thing, but I can move it 20 feet closer to where this thing is. Uh, uh -huh. I, don't, 
I don't think I have control over it. Um, and then with my action, uh, I mean, it's up in my face. I'm just going to try to hit it with my battle axe. Okay. Uh, that's a miss. Okay. Mm. That's all I do. Uh, Cadillac Granigots, you're up. Okay. Um, I think for the moment I'm going to um, hold any other spells in reserve. Um, and I'm just going to beat on this thing with Dust Crusher. So um, I am going to go ahead and make two swings. Okay. Bam, bam. Uh, both of those hit, and those are two-handed? They are so, indeed. So four-handed uh, so in total. 22 damage. Yeah, that looks bad. That looks bad. And, and I'm going to stay right where I'm at. Okay. Guitara, you're up. I do the same thing. I'll say you it looks it's looking pretty bad though yes it's looking pretty bad how do you roll in the advanced dice roller can you roll multiple die yeah uh what you do is go down like if you m mouse over to that d20 looking thing and go down to at the very bottom where it says advanced dice roller yeah. and then you just can type in the number of whatever die you want to roll so like you can roll like 70 20 like that or 4 d4 got it uh, I think this is right there we go yeah all right, so you you magic missile at it. Just... Yeah. Uh, it should be plus one for each of those, actually. So it's going to be forty-four plus four. Ah, gotcha. Okay. So it's cool. I mean, I can just I can add three. Uh, so it's really fourteen. Uh, that's enough to take it out. That kills it. After Granite Guts hammered it. Okay. The uh Okay. The uh withered looking thing that is stepping around the corner. Uh he comes forth and Ah, oh, Leonard, you've moved into sort of an alcove there, haven't you? Yes. Or the doorway, whatever it is. Okay. Ah, then, he's, then he's not going to go after you, I think. Oh, no. I don't think he can do this without... Yeah. Mm. Okay, he's not going to do that then. I'll allow it. Yeah, because that would target his own ally, unfortunately, so he's not going to do that. That's kind of bad. Okay. All right, Leonard, he points his staff at you. And yeah. what? Yeah. Again, I don't like it. I don't again, like it. Again, because it, you're still in the game. <laughs> you know, no, 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 no. I think he would. I no, think he would. He, he can pick me. It's fine. It doesn't hurt my feelings. It makes me no, feel no. love. It makes I'm me try... feel like he thinks I'm the mega threat. <laughs> Actually, I think he'd probably go after Zarya, but I'm trying to decide how this will work. Uh, Zarya, he points his staff down towards you as you're doing battle with Shazaka. 
and raises his staff and shoots what looks like a giant beam of energy out of his staff directly in your direction. Make a dexterity saving throw, please. I heard giant emo energy just in oh, case no. anybody else did. Giant uh, lightning energy. Uh, how are you looking, Zarya? Uh, I mean, okay. Not bad, but not good. Okay. A little beat up? I mean, a little beat up, yeah. Okay. I was just curious, because this is probably about to be bad, and I want to apologize in advance for this. I'm going to make a new character. <laughs> oh. Oh. Man. Just a minute. Hang on. No, you can hit Leonard. It's not going to hurt my feelings. No, no, no. It's Just jump done. in front of her and take one for the team. <laughs> uh, Zarya, you get blasted real hard with this bolt of lightning. Uh, you're going to take. I... Two... Go ahead. Can you? Can you what? I was going to say, may I take your re uh, reaction? You have a reaction, yes. You failed the saving throw, so you're taking the hit, but you That's do have fine. a reaction. Uh, uh, you're gonna... Go ahead. Now, what's your what's going to be your reaction? I'm going to use Stone's Endurance to reduce the damage. Okay, you take 25 lightning damage. Okay. Uh, here's a question. Uh, that yeah. technically would have reduced me to zero. Do I still get a reaction? Mm, to, you get a reaction. You get a reaction. You, rea you get a reaction. What's your Stone's Endurance going to do? Uh, we'll see. It reduces that by 10. So I only nice. take 15 and I'm still up. Nice. Yay. Okay. You're not displacing anymore, unfortunately. That is accurate. You're standing in front of a very big, nasty thing with big, big teeth and big claws, and you stop displacing. Uh, Ordella, you're up. Everything's, uh, everything's quiet in the room where you're at now. The human that was on the table, uh, is most definitely dead okay. as these creatures were eating the bowels out of it well i'm so glad i wasted my time i pick my sword up and well I if out. they're not dead they're definitely dying there's there's no there's no coming back from this your medical sense says well as a half orc you know how much medical sense do i have like uh, uh, enough to know that breathe in now. enough to, enough she to know did. that if you enough to know that if you've gutted an enemy it's probably not coming back <laughs> so uh i loot the body okay they uh i might as well What's she gonna do with it uh they're wearing leather gear and the the half alive person whose bowels are hanging out just sort of moans now she's at half you. alive no, she's dying. When I say dead, they mean I mean they're definitely dead. Like, not gonna make it. Oh, so in sorry, process, you're not gonna make it. Can I have your the, stuff? In the process of dying, they're not cold yet. Uh, they don't seem to have any stuff. It's like, hey, don't go through my stuff. Like, quiet, you're dying. You're hush, not gonna hush. make it. I'm looking for something to contact your family and let them know. <laughs> so rummage through your pockets. Oh Lord, do you really want to go there? <laughs> no. She can't hear there's me. A, She's dying. There's a picture of his. There's a picture of his kids. <laughs> oh, it's mad now. Oh well. Oh, uh, her kids. Sorry, my mistake. <laughs> Don't assume her or yeah. his gender. All right. There's nothing there. What are you doing? Nothing of value. Uh, I look around the room, see if there's anything useful in there. Uh, there's lots no. of blood and intestines right. on the walls and. Well, floor. that is not useful. <laughs> To me, anyway. There's okay. an altar that this creature was on that they appeared to be feasting. Okay. It has something that is scratched into a language that you don't really understand, but you do recognize one word, and it says Yenog. Okay. I think that's how you say it. It's, uh... Yenog, Y-E-E-N-O-G-H-U. Something about Yenog. But other than that. All right. 
Then I'm walking out, I guess. Yep. Gathering up my sword. You, uh, you've you surely heard the sounds of Leonard and others around the bend doing battle with something. Okay. Okay, you make it out of the room. You could definitely mm -hmm. make it out. Where are you going? Uh, let's see. I guess just where uh, Leonard is. Is that my... Uh, you could working. you could dash to about where Leonard is. Okay. Um, if we said that's. If we said you went to there forty, and then you went to like there, you can get to like the edge of those steps there okay. with a dash. All right. Okay. That's where I am. All right. It is Shizaka's turn. Big boss sees that you have stopped displacing and prepares to swipe at you Daria first with a chomping bite 16 hit you? Uh, it does not ooh very good and then claw attacks so a 10 misses but a 23 hits it does this does 6 slashing damage I'm up but barely all right, Leonard. You see the uh, the withered knoll creature that's blasted a few spells at you is missing pieces of its body, and you see the uh, you can see around the bend to the uh, the woman that was captured. She looks like she's been injured badly by this big thing. Wonderful. So I'm going to take aim at the big thing. Oh, am I? Okay, I'm unmuted. Just make sure. Uh, I'm going to take aim at the big thing and cast another catapult. Okay. DC 14 deck save for 18. He rolls a 16, so he passes. All right. Takes so half. Half. Okay. All right. Anything with your bonus action or anything else? Um, I'm gonna. Ooh, am I gonna stay where I am? I'm gonna move back into this. Well, no, I'm gonna try to stay spread out, like here in this little corner. Okay, I'm gonna try not to get into a direct line next to the spellcaster. Yeah, got exactly. it. Exactly. Uh, Zarya, you're up. You can move your spiritual weapon as a bonus okay. action, and you've got other stuff. Yeah, so uh, bonus action, I will move the spiritual weapon, and it should now be close enough that I can attack with it this time. Yep. Um, let me find that. There we go. That'll definitely hit. All right. Um, to heal myself or to do something stupid? Zari would probably do something stupid. Uh, is there enough space for me to fit here? Sure. Like, okay. Yeah, you can squeeze in there into that little alcove of death. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, can I get... God, this is stupid. Can I get a strength saving throw as I attempt to use Gust of Wind to shove this thing 15 foot backwards? I love it. Okay. Tell me how Gust of Wind works and what this looks like. A line of strong wind, 60 feet long and 10 feet wide, blasts from you in a direction of your choice of the spell's duration. Each creature that starts its turn in that line must succeed on a strength saving throw or be pushed 15 feet away from you in a direction following the line. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Uh, will you please r roll for me? Please roll for me 20d6. Um, sure. I actually don't know if I know how to... Okay, advanced dice roller. Yes, 20d6, so, please. Uh, D, D, 6. You watch as your gust of wind, as this creature just goes flying backwards. 15 feet. 
which is more than enough to carry it off the ledge and off the second ledge. As it plummets 200 feet straight down to the bottom of the cavern, you hear it just yelling the entire way down, and then you hear a colossal thud at the bottom, and the yelling stops. And I think that Zarya just, like, props herself against the wall and just, like, breathes a bit of a sigh of relief. I like Granite uh, Guts. Yeah. You're up. Um, okay, as I see uh, Ordella um, dart from the room. Uh, Ordella, what was your dash distance? Ordella could dash uh, 60 feet. 60 feet. Okay. You're a little squat person. You can dash 50. Yeah. So um, this, uh, this human or humanoid in this room are yep. they are are they they're they're dying correct R yep roll me medicine okay um there we go there is no healing outside of some sort of magical healing that could save them correct they are they are they are dying like, How? Well, I said that is Ordella doesn't have any magical healing. Ordella just like from her perspective, medicine, her knowledge, this person's dead. Um, I uh, glance around the room right quick, looking. Uh, I, uh, is there any greenery or moss or anything like that? Mm -mm, it's an ice cave. It's cold and cold and dry and without moss. Uh, roll me nature. We'll see if you can find some shrooms on the ground or something. A so I specifically, shrub. I'm not looking for something that heals. I'm looking for something that puts somebody into an altered state of of consciousness or awareness. So she needs elvish medicine. Um, yeah, I'm not necessarily concerned about medicine because this person has been ripped into pieces. I'm looking for something like basically moss morphine. You're doing palliative care. Yes. K ketamine or shrooms. Uh, yeah, you find I was about some, to say, give her some LSD. You find some brown fungus on the ground. Okay, um, I grab it right quick, and I do my best to mash it up. And um, I uh, put it into her mouth, and I uh, sit beside her, and I say... Um, I could the, lay on the, hands. And I, and I, and I, I could say, lay on hands, but I'm not gonna. No, she's been ripped apart. What good would that do? Um, that'd be that'd be horrible. Um, no, I say the the next world is better than this one. Um, you will meet your family across the next horizon, and I stay with her while she dies. Oh well, yeah. And uh, they all they I pat. did was loot her pockets. I, I like that though, Ordella. That's very on brand. What pockets, you know, she had across the room? Uh, yeah, they they pass sort of in front of you, and then that's that. Just just so the party knows, I will accept magical healing at my time of need. <laughs> is <laughs> is that a certain faith? It's like it's like if you're Torm's witness, you won't accept magical healing. <laughs> No, 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 no! I have, I, I have a card. I'm a Torm's witness. No magical healing. So I, <laughs> I'll accept magical healing. If anybody would like to magically heal me, I die enough that, uh, or come close to it, that it's probably worth. Yatar, Yatara, you're up. I think I can only make it. Uh, you can you you if you're dashing around the corner, you can go sixty feet. It's like thirty five feet to Ordella, and then you've got you've got an additional uh, twenty five feet. So you could you could make it out to actually where Zarya is if you so chose. Thirty five feet to Ordella roundabouts, and then because you've probably got sixty feet of dashing. Yeah, I'm gonna. St Stay here on the top of the stair. Okay. Yeah, no. you can now see the undead-looking withery thing. Yeah, it's its turn. 
And it's going to cast a spell at you. Now. It's been damaged. It's clearly taken damage. Uh, you need, Yatara, to make me a wisdom saving throw. And as you're trying to do that, all you hear is Nautiloid down in your mind. And I want you to take disadvantage on that, please. Okay. That's a nine. That's a fail. Uh, around Yatara's head, you see what looks like a magical twisted crown of ja jagged iron appear. And um, some sort of madness just starts to glow in Yatara's uh, eyes. And Yatara, uh, you are commanded to make a melee attack against Leonard. What melee weapons do you have? You have like a stick. You, a stick you can hit him with, or something. Or do you have a dagger or anything? I think the only thing I have is a hand axe. That's like okay. Okay. Yatara turns and hand axes his <laughs> Leonard. Leonard what? doesn't expect it at all. Nope. Roll me a hand axe attack. I don't even know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let me, I'll pull up your beyond character scene see if I can figure it out. I don't have beyond open to do this for you, so. Take me just a second. Campaign. Yeah, if guitar is in here, then I can do it. Campaign. Yes, guitar is there. I mean, I have it. Let me rephrase that. I have it in my inventory, but I don't have it. You know. Oh well, you act it. You activate it. You take out that hand axe, and you're gonna chomp at him. <laughs> that's how that's happening. Inventory. And if you have a hand axe, it's your you. It's being used. I don't even see it. I'm giving you one. It says Dwarven Hand Axe, because he did it as a custom item. Oh, okay. Okay, I got you, got you, got you. Well, then I'm adding a just regular old Hand Axe to your equipment. And I'm activating it. A rusty, blunt Hand Axe. Yeah, I'm activating it. So it's equipped. And now we're going to... Now you can just click Hand Axe there. It's plus zero to hit. And it's 1d6 plus your strength zero. So it's just 1d6 damage. So it's not going to do that much to him. And you might not even hit with it. If you click on it, actions, you can see it now under hand axe there. You want me to roll it? I can roll it. Oh, wait, I had to refresh. Now it popped up. Uh, that's a critical fail. <laughs> Guitara takes out a hand axe that Guitara has on his belt and swings it at Leonard, but it's the most, with this crown of madness around his head, but it is the most pitiful, like, you don't, Leonard, you're sure he's never swung an axe before in his life, <laughs> but yeah, he actually, almost... I, I, I wedge it into that wall of ice right beside him, <laughs> like a foot away. <laughs> Yatara has a mad look on his head so while he's trying to axe murder you, but you're pretty sure he doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, I appreciate the incompetence. The the ancient the withered, that the, the withered thing looks disappointed at his choices. Hortella, you're up. As you see, as you see Yatara go mad and try to axe Leonard. I'm really confused. So, um. Oh, no, I'm trying to avoid Yatara. Uh, let's see if I can... Let's see, do I have any range? Oh, God, I got cross... Getting my Dancing Longsword out is an action, right? And I can't use yes. it the first two pieces. Oh, uh, you still have it out. Oh, it's still out? Sweet. Mm -hmm. I got what, one more use or two. Uh, you have three... I think you only used it once before you dropped. 
Oh, did I? You have three more uses. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to send it this way to the thing on the right that I can see. The old, with the withered looking yeah. thing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And... That's a Maybe? mess. Ah! Goobies. All right. Shizaka is dead. Leonard, you're up. All right. Leonard is going to take aim at this trusty, dusty gentleman that I have been trying to kill. Uh huh. And do another firebolt. I mean, you've seen worse things. It hits, does some damage. It's got to make a con save. You knock out one of its ribs. Let me make a con save for it real quick. See if it can maintain concentration. It's concentrating on... It's thinking that maybe it should have charmed you, Leonard. Nope, it loses its concentration and the the crown, the metallic crown disappears from Yatara's head. Uh, Zarya, you're up. All right, uh... I'm going to move up to right in front of uh, Leonard. Um, and bonus action, I'm going to shift the wind because this is a concentration spell and I'm shifting it towards the thing that's heading our way. So uh, you're blowing it backwards away from you? Uh, yeah. So you, you just, as long as you're concentrating, you can just push things 15 feet if they fail their saves. If they fail their save, yes. Um, also, if they try to come at me in this wind, um, their speed is essentially half. They have to spend two feet of movement for every one feet that they try to move. Okay, so it's what kind of save? Strength. 13. Uh, they fail. Okay, so it's moved 15 feet backwards. All right, and with the rest of my movement, I am moving the hell out of dodge because I still don't look good, so... Cadillac Granite Guts, you're up. All right. Um, I am going... Your patient, your patient has passed, Cadillac. You've performed excellent palliative care. Take inspiration. Ooh. Um, I will uh, take the dash action, which I think should probably get me to about right here. Yep, you're able to dwarf and hoof it around there. Yeah. And, uh, that's thirty. That's thirty-five feet. So you've got a little further you can go. Yeah, that's the reason I was curious how far Ordella had gotten because I've got fifty. Ordella um, could have. Ordella could have gotten further than that. She, I think, maybe chose not to. Um. Okay. So you she, said this is thirty. From well, were you in the back of the altar or the front of the altar? I was. I was about. I was right here. All right. So, look. Okay. You can get to yeah about where you had yourself. Yeah, that's what I kind of thought. Um, Yatara was Yatara was closer. He was at the edge of the thing. Yeah, that that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Yatara was at the edge of the thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I will uh, hang out here then. You don't see anything, but you see that the Goliath woman looks wounded. Yeah, I hear a lot of commotion. <laughs> and you see people gathered at this like choke point. That's you know. Guitar, you're up. Let me let me give y'all a piece of D and D advice. It is always a good strategy to bunch together against a spellcaster. Is that kind of where the ladder is? So that thing is pretty much like underneath that. Yeah, it, this thing is underneath. It's like I, imagine this is like a like a spire. It's over top it's kind of underneath it okay it's i just have it on top so you can see it but it's you can see it directly okay. it's underneath this thing and that's a pretty big drop uh it is uh 70 feet down that ladder and then it is a further 100 feet uh down the bottom there so technically i should have had to roll or not to Zarya roll 17d6 instead of 20d6, but it wouldn't have mattered. Gotcha. Um, it's a hmm. deep drop, for sure. I found the cast hypnotic pattern on him. Oh, okay. What? 
This is a wisdom save. Yeah, 17 wisdom save. Okay. Working on it. Twenty-two. Anything happen on the on the successful save? So n basically, nothing yeah. happens it if it passes, right? Yeah, nothing happens if it passes. Okay. Its turn. Plants its staff in the ground raises its hand and a giant ball of fire starts to appear out of its hand as it prepares to unleash a giant area of effect spell no it doesn't have it doesn't have fireball I wish it had fireball then every everybody dies it's hilarious um what's it do Uh, it's going to move forward and it's going to I know what it's going to do. It's going to Sorry. Roll 20 is taking, taking a moment. going to cast uh, an Eldritch Blast, basically, at, uh, I think, you, Leonard. There's 15. Spell that? Yeah, for sure. All right, I'm going to counter. Uh, wait, hold on. Oh. Okay, it is close enough. Um, I'm going to cast Counter Spell. Okay. And this is a cantrip, so it just fails like you don't even have to roll for it the spell just withers out as it tried to cast this blast a blast of energy like leaves its staff and heads directly towards leonard and just foofs out as it uh, reaches starts to reach thank you or, or della you're up okay let's see all right uh come around here where i can see the guy and spot at him, maybe? No, that's less than my last one. Isn't it? Uh, no. Uh, no. What was your last? Last that's one was better. eleven. Okay. Eleven. That fourteen hits. Oh, it does! Yay! Yeah. It just meets. Uh, ten slashing. Yeah, it looks real bad now. How would it be one-handed versus two-handed if it's loading? It's one-handed. Just, just curious. I'm just ruling that it counts as one-handed since it's loading. Okay. Then that's hits for 12. Yep. Looks bad. Cool. Uh, I said 10. I meant 12. Leonard, okay. you're up. All right. Leonard is going to, again, can trip at my friend here with Firebolt. That's a miss. And that's a miss, yeah. And then I'll continue to stay where I am. Zarya, you're up. Alright, um... I'm not actually hidden. Like, it can see me, I can see it from here, right? Uh, let me see. Uh, from where you're at, it would have, like, partial cover. Like, you'd have to move 
to like it's AC is going to get like a plus two bonus to any attack roll. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to move out so that I can see it better, and I'm going to attempt toll the dead again. Um, okay. See, so yeah, uh, wisdom save. Okay. That's a fail. Okay. And it has taken damage. So instead it takes... Okay, hold on. Instead it takes 2d12. Oh, man. One of its arms falls off. Okay, and then I dart back into some sense of cover over here. Granite Guts, you're up. Okay, we did say this is undead. This is undead. All right. Um, I uh, move right here, and um, I uh, point Dusk Crusher at Tim, and I uh, channel Are Divinity. Are you Care Bear staring? And no, no, I've already done that. Oh, have you? So yeah, it's I can't do that again. Um, no, um, and I say in as booming a voice as I can, um, uh, in the name of Sylvanus, uh, turn. And so I will attempt to turn the unholy. Okay. What's its saving throw? DC 12. Wisdom? Wisdom. Fails. Eight. It's just like turn and dead. Um, yes. And let me see. Um, yeah, on a failure, it is turned for one minute or until it takes damage. Okay. All right, so it is turned. It has to use its action to move away from you, I think. Okay. Uh, the creature must spend its turns trying to move as far away from you as it can. It can't willingly move within 30 feet of you. Okay. And that, of course, evaporates um, should it take damage. Yeah. Flee uh, for 10 rounds. It's a minute, right? Lasts Correct. for a minute unless it takes damage. Uh, yeah. Okay. Guitar, you're up. It's sort of like you see it sort of like hiss and sort of like turn its head after uh, Granite Guts cast that spell or channeled his divine. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Um, you said it it loses that if it takes damage, right? Yeah, I, I don't know which if you know about it. Basically, uh, it has to move away from Granite Guts. Spend its turn. A turned creature spends its turns trying to move as far away from you as it can. It can't willingly move within thirty feet of you. It also can't take reactions. For its action, it can only use the dash action to try to escape from an effect that prevents it from moving. If there's nowhere to move, the creature can use the dodge action. So basically it has to try to run away from Granite Guts as far as it can get for a minute. So do you remember, uh, did you ever see John Candy in the Great Outdoors? Yes. Yeah. So this is, he's like the ball butted bear. <laughs> at the end. At least okay. temporarily. <laughs> It just matters if Guitarist gonna just blasts it and the turning goes away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, well, I really don't know what to do now. But I'm kind of thwarted by plan what I was gonna do. Um. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> um. Actually, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move here the time being and then that is all i'm gonna do 
Okay. It's this thing's turn, and it uh, it vanishes into the uh, into the dark back here. Um, let me see if uh, I have an appropriate soundscape for you. Now would be the time for the. You're all gonna die. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You are going to die. No, that's not what's happening. Uh, it is uh, horribly windy and, uh, you know, freezing cold. Wind is whistling around on the outside of the crag, and this thing sort of vanishes into the dark as far as its movement can carry it, as it moves away quickly seemingly turned by Granite Guts's uh, actions. Uh, out of initiative, what all do you guys do now? As you How find bad yourself. is everybody looking? What does Zarya say or do? As bad. Zarya, the, you don't know any of these people, Zarya, but they have seemingly like come to you, prevent your imminent death. So, I would first appraise them and see who's looking worse before I even say anything. And then as soon as I determine, and I think it's Ordella's, but... I think it's Ordella, too. I think Ordella was near dead. Um, so I think what I would do is I would reach out and uh, walk towards Ordella and put my hand on her shoulder and say, Sweetheart, you look like shit. And I'll cast Cure Wounds. Um, <laughs> Thanks, I feel like it, too. And then I'll look around at the others and say... I would have had him, maybe. <laughs> I had this under control. But uh, she's kind of panting. She's not looking great herself. Um, but uh, you get 13 hit points. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and then she's going to do the same to herself. Um, she's going to do a lower version of that to herself. For eight. Uh, but she does say, after she says, you look like shit, she looks out around at everybody and says, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to say that this creature continues to, like, vanish into the distance, and uh, you guys uh, don't hear it anymore, wherever it's gone off to. Seemingly has vanished into the distance. You do still hear the pained cries of humanoids coming from deeper in this cavern in this direction. Not um, falling for it. They're dead. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right my last time helping somebody. Is anybody below 20 health, just by the way? I just got above 20. I Zarya not. is. Zarya has 10 hit points. She was down to two. Before. Oh, dear Lord. Uh, okay, so I lay on hands then, and I give you um, I give you 10. Uh, Thank you. Uh, did you say Sylvanas? Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's uh, huh. sounded kind of awkward. Huh. <laughs> uh, mm. And she just like gestures towards her shield, and you see the you see the emblem of uh, how do you pronounce it? Is it tr duh, 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 duh. Thrim? Thrim. Mm. Yeah, and she doesn't like mean it as awkwardly as it sounds, but she is a little <laughs> awkward. <laughs> well like, met, okay. traveler. Well met. And I give you a big slap on the back. Mm. Uh, um, she says thank you as you uh, lay on hands. What are you doing out here, Zarya? Are you asking them the same, or? Um, at the moment, I think I would look at everybody and say, "That thing will be back, or to bring more." What? What are you doing here? 
I uh, think we have an opportunity, if it does come back, to get in a little bit of a better position so we're not quite so bunched up, um, to use the terrain to our advantage a little bit, hopefully. Also, uh, do we want to try to come to the aid of the other, what other people are clearly suffering here? Uh, hopefully they won't be uh, disemboweled. Yeah, I, I, I saw the people in the cages, so I, I feel compelled to help them out. I'm not quite sure if they saw me, but I definitely know that they are a growing concern. I'll just ask, where are they? I heard their screams. That's what drew me that's what drew me to the to the crevasse and well yeah, I'll I'll lead the way because they're up north a little ways. Uh Zarya will follow. Yeah. Um, I don't actually know where it is, though, so someone else is going to have to oh, it's, um I'll take you there. Do, 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 do. Like up this way. All right. Is anybody else going up there with Leonard and Zarya? Yes. Are y'all... I'll go up. Yeah. Okay. We'll all go. Everybody's going. All right. What you see is a uh, sturdy uh, metallic cage made out of some sort of metal. Maybe it's iron or steel or something with uh, two humans in it. They are both wearing uh, winter clothing, but uh, not heavy enough for where they're at. And they appear to be like commoners, like ten-towners. Uh, they're both alive, and as they see you, they look weak and malnourished, and they uh, see all of you and basically like beg for help. Is the cage locked? It is. Okay. Um, I'll just tell them to back up and I'll swing my axe at it if they back up. Uh, they'll get as far away from you as they possibly can. Uh, give me an attack roll. Your axe clings down really hard, but it, uh, it doesn't break the lock. I mean, if, um, if y'all are just going to sit here and waylay on it, eventually you'll get it. I was going to say, I can try with Dust Crusher. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Use I your have a hand axe. Your... <laughs> <laughs> Don't cast it. Fireball. <laughs> Isn't it still stuck in a wall back there? Yeah. <laughs> you had Correction. You had a hand axe. <laughs> yeah. As long as we don't involve Fireball again for... Um, okay, uh, do, you yeah. me, do, you, do you want me to roll yeah. that? Or... Yeah, roll an attack, roll a dust crusher. Do it. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see whose god is more powerful. Oh. Oh, snap. Okay, wow. it's, a, it's a It's a god off. I am going to um, use a spin the sl spell slot to do divine smite. I'm totally now, doing now, that. Now, now, now. You don't know if you've hit. Okay. So first, just roll and see if you hit. Okay, so I have to roll. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Are you uh, going to, like, look her directly in the eyes? You, like, bust <laughs> the lock open? Like, oh, look. Um. Okay, there's Dust Crusher. Okay. Uh... Yeah, Dust Crusher comes down really, really hard on the lock. But the lock does not give. And you just sort of look at it, you're like, huh. Have well. we tried, like, jiggling it or asking it nicely? <laughs> Do you say that? <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Zarya kind Anyone, of growls. Like, is it actually locked? <laughs> Checked. Uh, do you check it? Yes, I'll go yeah. up to it and look at the lock. Yes, it's locked. Okay. It just looks like a metal <laughs> just lock. Just sure. you know, A simple metal Are you lock. Sure? Simple. If only you, if only you guys had an artificer or a rogue or something. If only. Oh, I, I, I can. I'm just not great at it, but I'm happy to try. It's okay. worth a try. Can you pick locks or make a lock picking device? I do have a lock picking kit, or I have thieves tools. Oh my goodness! Oh, <laughs> okay. Roll me a dexterity check. You can use your. Are you proficient with it? I assume you I are. If you have it. So your proficiency bonus is better than plus two. Yes, so add, it's plus add, three. So that's uh, sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah, with a sixteen, you pop the lock. So, so the two, the two 
we had a god off and both of y'all just like fail at smashing it entirely wow. but <laughs> but then leonardo raises up and goes you know i got lock picks <laughs> <laughs> well, I figured when it didn't break with an axe, it was a magical lock. But... You know, you figured it was just had an AC of 20 because it was made out of iron. Like, how many of you, like, have you ever, like, even a master lock, if you took, like, a like a wood chopping axe to it and, like, hit a master lock with a wood chopping axe, I'm sorry, you might not break it. You might. You might not. Hey, Maybe a hand axe. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's open, and the people uh, sort of stammer out. Uh, one of them tells you that, uh, actually, both of them tell you that they are uh, locals, both of them, uh, from the uh, town of Goodmead. Uh, they are fishermen. They were previously out fishing. They got grabbed by a party of these, like, hyena creatures uh, while they were taking a break and drug all the way back here presumably for sacrifices to their evil hyena god or for meals. For snack time. For snack time. Yeah. Uh, as you're sort of standing there, you hear uh, pained, uh, like, shaking and rattling of bars from uh, and uh, groans and moans coming from across the way. I just look over at the robot thing and say, "I just, I just." Point I don't know where any more are, but I hear people. Oh, we hear it, but we can't see it. Uh, he can't see it. Well, oh, okay. You can see well, it. I, I don't think I can see it from where no, I. No, you can't see it, but. Ah, uh... uh, okay. Zarya has vision. Actually, you should be able to see it. Really, everybody can see it, because I want this to be sort of an open vision uh, world. So, at this point, we're going to... I'm going to open up the vision, guys. So, one moment. I don't know if this will work, or if you will have to refresh the page. We'll find out. Work. Did that, did that open work. up vision? Yeah. Oh, I need to do something real quick. Ha 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 ha. Ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I see it all. Quick, memorize it. There you go. Whoops. Oh, that didn't work. And of course, Roll Twenty is freaking out as I try to fix that. All right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> so while you're doing that um is harkus technically here he's yeah just... he's just being useless okay um i sort of shoulder i, I sort of shoulder harkus and say hey you big lug why don't you share a couple of pelts with these freezing to death people giving away his pelts <laughs> Uh, Harkus looks at you and just goes, I think, no. No. <laughs> oh, go. Jesus. <laughs> okay, so no pelts. Okay, like so it. no pelts. No pelts. They're mine. They're mine. They can just skin get... their own Yeti. <laughs> he just hisses at me. Um, uh, okay. Making well, character decisions for Harkus. Yeah, well, I, mean, I wasn't sure if wrong. we could just treat him as a pelt vendor here. Okay, um, roll for roll. Roll persuasion. I'm going to roll Harkus as an NPC, and we'll see if you persuade Harkus to give him a pill. Okay. I think that's fair. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's going to come back, and he's not going to have any pelts, and he's going to want to know why. Yeah, Ooh. you persuade him to give him two pelts. Okay. I should probably roll Harkus's insight or like wisdom or something, but no, I'm just going to give it to you. The 19. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you know what would have been awesome if it would have been sleight of hand? Because he would be like, "What pelts? <laughs> I don't see yeah. any pelts. There's no pelts here." You give him some pelts, and they're able to uh, they they warm up a little bit. Uh, you see across the way, there's another humanoid creature inside of another cage. It's uh. 
rattling and smashing at things. I will tell everybody that there's a way around on the other side. It just wraps around. And I will begin walking that direction. Yep. There's also ladders and things that head down and bridges crossing. I will follow. So if you headed down the ladder, you could cross over the other yeah, way. But that bridge that might... kind of looks sketch. A little bit. Yeah, I'm going to go around. <laughs> okay. Don't know if anybody's following me, but... Um, I will try the bridge. All right. So I guess I will, yeah, go down here and then try the bridge. Yeah, you're able to make your way across the bridge. It holds you. And you make it over to the other side. You're on a lower level here. Um, I meant for there to be another ladder here, so I'm going to make one happen. There. I think I'm just going to like walk around. I don't trust those bridges. <laughs> so yeah, you're able to uh, skitter up the across the bridges and up the ladder. In fact, there's a ladder right there where you're standing at Granite Guts that leads out of the crevasse instead of having to go in the instead of having to go out the cave that you came in. Oh, nice. It leads up to the outside where you were before. Uh, there is a man in front of you inside of the cave. He is wearing what looks like leather, pieces of leather. Uh, and uh, he looks like a wildling almost, like a barbarian local native or something like that. Uh, he uh, he has a wild look in his eyes as he's like shaking at the bars of the cage. He just looks at you and, just, and shakes at the bars. Um, roll perception. Who? Uh, you. Okay. Granite um, cuts. Ba -ba -ba -bum. Okay. <laughs> uh, hang on. It needs to do something. Okay. Uh. It is, uh, it just babbles something and seems to be talking to itself as it sort of shakes at the bars a little bit. Arr! Um, I guess I ask, uh, Leonard, hey, uh, do you think, do you want to, do you want to try letting this guy out or do you think, um, well, a little I bit mean well on the wild side? We are looking for the barbarians to figure out. Well, that didn't do it. Nope. You reach over there, try to pick the <laughs> pick the locks, and it does not do it. Uh, roll me perception, Leonard. Okay, rolling perception. Maybe that'll go. Ooh, ooh. Uh, Leonard, dirty twenty. Dirty twenty, Leonard, sitting over in the corner, not far from the cage. You see a couple of items which uh, sort of like strike you as a little bit unusual. You see what looks like a spear and then like a flail. But the weird thing about the spear is that it is tipped with that dark crystalline stuff that the, that the, uh, the Dwergar have been stealing. So it's a shardolin tipped spear. Mm hmm. And the flail has little pieces of shardlin lodged into it. Um, I'm going to take. And the. I'm going to take one of those. And these, these pieces are decorated with like barbarian like symbology and markings along the handle of the spear and the flail. Yeah, I'm definitely. I'm, I'm taking. Well, no, I, I like maces, so I'll take the flail. Okay. Uh, you take the flail. Um, Do I recognize any of the markings? Um, what languages do you speak? Uh, common, draconic, giant, and goblin. No. Alas, no. 
you I'm going to hide that flail in my pack real good. Okay. Um, it, it feels real bad when you pick it up. You get a real, like, negative sense. And as you pick up the flail and put it into your pack, this guy in the cage just, just goes, Aah! and just starts shaking the bars of the cage like crazy. Unless you're trying to do it stealthily or something. Oh, I am trying to do it stealthily because I okay, imagine okay. Is, then I would like him not to know. Then roll me stealth. All right, not the artificer's strong. I should have been a rogue. Not a rogue. Seventeen. Uh, let's see what his perception is. Perception. Yeah, he sees you. Sorry, dude. Oh, no, that's fine. That's fine. I was prepared for that. Yeah, he grabs the cage bars and he shakes them madly and just screams like things that you don't understand. He has a wild, mad look in his eyes. All right, maybe I'm not going to pick his lock. I was going to pick his lock, but... Since he saw me, I'm going to take the spear, too. Okay. <laughs> it feels real... It feels real bad, man. Holding the spear. Like, you feel real negative energies. Uh, bad vibes coming from the spear. But you got it. Pass it off to Harkus. He'll be fine. Well, that's sort of a worst-case scenario. But... Okay. So you've got a guy in a cage, and you've got his spear and his flail. What now? Well, so so I guess the question is, you know, we are trying to find the barbarian hordes for which we're chasing the reindeer or something. Uh, do we think, can? do we have a way to communicate with this guy that can meaningfully get us there? Or uh, is it all Greek to him? Because if it's all Greek to him, I'm taking his stuff. Well, you haven't really tried to talk to him. I have. Uh, so, so my language is, I don't understand what he's saying, do I? Uh, he seems to just be babbling some inane stuff, but you haven't really spoken to him. Okay, I'm going to try to talk to him in common. Okay, what are you saying? I'm going to say, hey, can you understand me? Uh, he shakes out of the bars and he looks up at you and he just goes, Yes. Okay, do you want out? Yes. Okay, are you going to calm down? Yes. Can I have your stuff? Yes. Okay, so um, <laughs> I have... Are you going to hurt us? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, Keep so I want to I, I try, I wanna try something right quick. Um... Okay. I've never used this before, um, but um, I uh, cast my hand up and I say, in the name of Sylvanus, speak the truth. And I cast Zone of Truth on him. Fancy. All right, what do I need to roll? <laughs> <laughs> no, Leonard, you're definitely in the zone. <laughs> Love it. That's hilarious. okay. Maybe that had unintended consequences. <laughs> Oops. All right, Leonard, who's your secret crush? <laughs> <laughs> it's Harkus. <laughs> the um, evil is just intoxicating. So, so okay. So, what effect does this have on somebody who's nutters? He, uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, he can only speak the truth, so only truth will come out of him. But what if you're bonkers? That's yes, that that's, that helps. A crazy truth. Uh, <laughs> okay, some degree of clarity seems to enter his eyes, and he looks over at you all, and he says, um, "Hang on, let's see." Uh, 
I apologize. I wasn't quite ready for bringing clarity to the madman. So, give me 30 seconds. He didn't expect us to choose diplomacy, people. No, I didn't expect zone of truth on the insane. That's not how they operate. <laughs> <laughs> smash, smash. <laughs> Kill it. That's what they do. Sometimes with fire. Okay. Um, one sec. Yeah, okay. I think he looks up at you all and he says... Give me back my weapons. Alak Naka will destroy all of you. The world will be consumed in his everlasting darkness. I recognize that name. Uh, roll. I don't even know what you should roll for this. Um, roll me history. Yeah, history. No. <laughs> Yeah, you don't know. It's a some something evil. I'm I'm definitely willing, and I, and I'll tell him. You know, I'm I'm willing to give his things back, but I would prefer that we come to an understanding first. Um, Why do you want these weapons back? They are mine. They are part of me. They are part of me. They are part of me. I am part of them. Okay, but if if you get these back, are you going to kill us? They're part of me. They speak to me. They tell me truths. They lead me where I must go. I must bring about the end. Bring about Alaknaka's great judgment. What have you done um, this... with these weapons? I have brought blood, blood, blood to honor him. Jeff, does, does he have a... Um... A black gem around his neck. A what around his neck? Like one of the shard. Like is he one of the possessed people that's dead and possessed? No, he doesn't okay. have. He doesn't have the shard dagger around his neck. But uh, he seems to be totally possessed. The best way I could describe him, he is. He is like goleming after his precious, which are the the like the like flail and spear that you've taken from him. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask him where he's from, like what what barbarian tribe? He says group? does he says it doesn't matter. They are all but dust. Okay, that's that's not super helpful. <laughs> <laughs> they don't matter. All that matters is divine judgment. So you can't give us an introduction to the barbarian tribe. They matter not. That's not the question. That's not he's, the in question. Tr- he's in zone of truth. He's in zone. Okay, in zone. Tr- he says, "They will all die. You will all die." Okay, I, I'm not very motivated to give him his stuff back at this point. So it does say for zone of truth, an affected creature is aware of the spell and can avoid answering questions to which it would normally respond with a lie. Mm-hmm. It would just be quiet. If it could be cagey. He's is- insane. He's so basically this is how I'm ruling this, okay? He is mad. Okay. You, you guys have gathered that. He is insane. He has a madness that is afflicting him. Uh you guys can all roll insight. Yeah, cuz I'd like to I don't know. I, my, my whole goal in talking to him is trying to facilitate um okay, okay. I did not get it, but no. Uh, Sorry. Okay. So Zarya and Guitara, and I need to see what Ardella rolls. Uh, okay. So Zarya and Guitara, the two like two of the magical people, 
you two sort of get the impression that this person has been driven mad and it is an evil madness that has overcome them and it seems to be because of those pieces of Chardolin that have done it to him Zarya maybe you know from being around this part of the world that this stuff is bad and contaminates minds and shouldn't be like kept on you so like Leonard has it and he probably shouldn't keep it uh, but this is this stuff has clearly driven him crazy and the best impression that you get is that he's speaking about some ancient old god or evil god or evil demon that the, he like <laughs> the demonic energy of this stuff is like put his brain in contact with so like there's like a demon Alaknaka or whatever it is that is like speaking to his brain okay and i'm in the zone of truth so i'll just look over at leonard and say i don't think you want either of those and i'll explain that the shardlin can uh can corrupt um, okay like i'm i'm open to giving them back to him but i would really I didn't like say to i didn't say give it back to him he probably shouldn't have them either but we shouldn't keep them on him on us I want to destroy oh. them. I want them to meet Dust Crusher. Oh, that's an idea. Let's do that and see if it gets better. I want to introduce these things to Dust Crusher. Okay. Do I'm you totally give them to down him? for that. So then you give them to him, Leonard. How do you do this? Um, I guess I ignite the head of Dust Crusher, um, mm -hmm. and then um, and then bring it down on them. I guess he's laid them down on the ground. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll lay them down on the ground nicely so that one fell swoop can take out the crystals on both. And yeah. Ho hopefully this doesn't work like uh, Gimli in the ring. Um, do I need to roll for this? Yeah, go ahead and roll me attack roll. Okay. I don't know if you can destroy Shardlin. I'll have to. I'm not 100% certain. Well, uh, you remember we asked, we searched the library for information on how to destroy it, and we didn't get anything super helpful. Yeah, yeah. you asked about how to destroy it, and the book couldn't really tell you. The um, tower was shattered, so it can be destroyed. Yeah, that's where the I, shards came from. I don't want to ruin uh, the book here. <laughs> Because I think we 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 heard that in the lore. I think I don't think that's metagaming. I think that was a part of the history we heard or read somewhere, right? Or am I misremembering that? Okay, I'm going to rule this here. Twenty six, with a twenty six to hit, you bring the hammer down on top of these pieces, and it crushes underneath the divine power of this like brilliant hammer they shatter into a million small pieces and shards and are just sort of blown away into the wind and disappear in front of you. The, uh, the man in the cage collapses to his knees and just screams, No! With his best Darth Vader impression. And he falls over and collapses on the ground. I tell if he's in any form of medical distress. Or is he uh, sad so because he took away his toys? <laughs> yeah, roll, medicine, roll medicine. And then roll drama. Uh, he's breathing. He's I mean, if you're going to go up and like touch him and like check his pulse and stuff... You see his chest rising as he's on the ground, so he's definitely not dead. Okay. Maybe we leave that one in the cage. Yeah. Maybe we leave I'm that one me. in the cage. We can come back to visit, maybe. Maybe uh, not. <laughs> 
Maybe he's fine. Speaking of being fine, I could really use a rest. Um, would you all care to join me in finding a place to camp? That sounds like a great idea. Yeah. Leonard, since you possessed these weapons for just a moment, I need you to roll me a quick d6, please. Okay. Uh -oh. Two. Okay. You're cool. And you're free of you're free of it at this point since they've been destroyed. Awesome. Okay. Are you all going to try to camp out inside of this cavern and wait for the evil spellcaster thing to return? <laughs> I'm I'm thinking like somewhere other than this cavern would be pretty pretty swell. Okay. Preferably warm and sunny. So do you guys yeah. climb climb out yeah. the ladder up to the top of the crevasse? Ordella, didn't you have some type of Oh we got the fortress thing? Yes. At two oh yes. <laughs> you do. You have uh yeah, Darren's it's complete instant with like water beds and heaters and everything. You have a Darren's instant fortress, you do. Where are you gonna put that? Are you putting it right outside this crevasse? I guess so. Is so that really in is the that crevasse? Really Okay, I love this. I'm going to bring you back to the outside. As the I morning, said, let's get out of here first. In the morning, you wake up totally surrounded by a whole bunch of... <laughs> it's like, where did this fortress come from? My pocket. I'm, I mean, no, I'm dead serious. Like, where exactly are you going to put it? Um, all of you climb out the ladder. I assume the ladder, right? Or are you going to go back out through the cave? I would say the ladder. Mm -hmm. Probably the ladder, ladder heading directly up next to where you're at. Uh, I need to... Where where did you go? 2.0. 2. Zarya, let me get you. Hang on. You're on this scene, too. Uh, you are... Um, Roll 20 is frozen. Great. Awesome. I hope it re I hope it loaded for all you guys. It did. Yeah, we're outside. Great. Yeah. I'm gonna I'll bring Zarya up here. Uh, all of you climb out of the crevasse and you're back. It is now uh, the sun is setting, so it is getting dark. So you are outside of this crevasse. Are you going to try to make your way anywhere else, or are you going to set up the fortress here? Hmm. It's getting dark. I feel like we did not get to explore the crevasse very much. Um, there may be secrets um, left to Ma discover there. Magical weapons. Yes, magical, oh. delicious magical weapons. I know, long his boat for sure. Yeah. He's like, you didn't let me explore. So after we lick our wounds for a moment, maybe plunging back down into the crevasse might might be an interesting idea okay yeah. so Ordella, you place the one inch uh, metal cube on the ground and you need you say the command word what is your command word lord i didn't think that far ahead <laughs> uh i don't know what's a good command word for a fortress you tell me Uh, open. Open. That sounds good. <laughs> that's gonna be. I can just tell that's gonna be problematic at some point in the future. <laughs> Never. <laughs> the command open word. The door. Oh God. The command word is just open. <laughs> well, you spring this on me last minute. I've had a chance to think of a command word. Okay, uh, a fortress that is twenty feet on each side and thirty feet high all of a sudden just like unfolds from this thing like it's like you know it's like clunk, 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 clunk. like like it's folded up into like a sheet of paper that's been folded so it unfolds itself like origami from this metal cube and uh there is a door in sitting there there is a ladder running between the two floors it's 20 feet by 20 feet the ladder ends at a trap door and there's another trap door leading up to the roof uh it is a small door that's facing you and the door opens at your command. 
which you can speak as a bonus action. What is, is the that... command? I assume the command is also open. And the door opens. And uh, you're able to make your way into the fortress. So as all of this happens, Zarya is just like open mouth, like looking up at all of this. And uh, she just looks around at all of them and says, who are you people? Who are you people? Toots crew as a single tier. You're Toots crew. Toots crew. <laughs> you're Toots crew? No, you're not. I don't see a bird. Like, where's where's the bird guy? Who, wait. And we all start sobbing uncontrollably. Oh, yeah. Too soon. Too soon. <laughs> all right. You all are able to make your way into the fortress. There's nothing in it. Uh, it's just a fortress. Little poopies. Uh, I thought so I worked like a hot tub and stuff. There's not a hot tub or anything, <laughs> although you could furnish it potentially. Uh, well, you, that fold up as well. You could buy some beds and you have bed rolls, but you could buy some beds, maybe get a little dinette set, little little kitchenette. Um, this is the first time you've been in it. It's not well furnished. Jeff, uh, but, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put some stuff in it. I'm gonna put like just a piece of paper in it. Because uh -huh. what I'm curious about is, does the stuff I put in it stay in it? Like, is it, it just compresses magically, or is it a separate dimension that resets every time it starts? You're so. gonna, I want you to be able to furnish your fortress. So mm. it's it's a fortress of holding. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. That, that answers my question. So, yeah, but, I mean, like, it, it has specific dimensions. So, like, you, you're not going to be able to keep, like, infinite, like, items in here i just didn't want to decide to holding. stash my valuables and oh i see then we close it and they're gone oh the fortress no, the, is empty again no this is a great place to stash your valuables this uh, is really cool it's uh yeah it's it's really uh a strong thing um magic like googling words magic prevents it from being tipped over the walls each have 100 hit points and uh, it has immunity to damage from non-magical weapons, excluding siege weapons. Resistance to any other damage. So it can be damaged if things are attacking it with magical weapons. Or the ballista. Yeah, the only thing that can repair it is a wish spell. Is a what? A wish spell. <laughs> a wish spell. Yeah, get level, get level 9 spells. Mm. Get, get good. All right, so Yatara is our only hope to repair it. If Yatara achieves, like, level 18. All right. You guys make it your way into your sealed fortress and are able to uh, prepare to rest up. I have, a, I have a question about it. Is it flammable? <laughs> the fortress? <laughs> Just, Get it out. You know, out of curiosity. Get out. Okay, okay, okay. Let me, let me, let me describe it to you. It's made out of adamantine, so the fortress itself is not the fortress itself is not flammable. It won't burn down, but it would make a really nice oven for anybody inside it. Mm. No. Mm -mm. Baked adventurers. And then we just might as well start a new campaign. Everybody, we have introduced the end. Roll credits. We've introduced Zarya to you all. I assume you guys tell Zarya what you're doing out here and who you're going after. This is Zardok Sunblight and why you were headed towards his fortress. You've been told about their plans with this evil stuff to destroy the world. And uh, something, something, something about the Frost Maiden and trying to figure out why the world is the way it is. And stopping the evil of the Frost Maiden. I'll let you guys figure out what you tell Zarya and how you guys roleplay that out next time. I hope you all had fun tonight. It yep. was a good, oh, good fight. Good yeah. game. Fun. I've got to figure out how to attack Zarya with uh, that cloak of displacement. I mean, you did great. It's just, <laughs> yeah. Area of effect will be fine. <laughs> the answer is area f effect and saving throws. Yep. Mm. Well, you got a high AC, hit him with the saving throws. So get ready for some spell casting baddies. Mm -hmm. 
Yay. Hey, spellcast, I like wizard fight. Here comes counterspell, and I counterspell your counterspell. I hope you guys all had fun. We'll see you guys next week where you figure out what you're doing about uh, Zardok and the terribleness that's happening. And ultimately, you know other things to rehash the rest that you already know. Something, something about a frozen city underneath the ice leading towards the answer of how to reverse the Frost Maiden. Something, something about, uh, and you know where one of the spires of said frozen city are. Something, something about uh, this craft that Yatara knows about that's crashed into the ice that is now screaming into his mind. And, uh, yeah, other things that you guys know. So. And do we do we know that we're closer to that than we have been before, or is that Yatara keeping that close to the vest? I don't know, Yatara. Are you telling people? Well, how where are we right now? Like, I'll I show you where we are on the map. Okay, I'll I'll bring you up to the map real quick. Uh, I hate to cut off the. We can keep this in the recording, but uh, here I'll bring you to the map. You are. On the map of the Icewind Dale. You guys are right here. At this path right here between these two uh two kajiggers. Okay. So if In I know fact, we're going south, then yes, I would have shared that information that you know it's getting louder just you know, as we progress south, like we, because um, we knew it was to the south, right? So I think I would have shared that information with everybody. Yeah. yeah you know, it's actually over here at that diamond. Mm -hmm. You can tell exactly where it's at. And you're heading towards Zardok Sunblight's lair, which they told you was here. As you're making your way through the spine of the world. And other things you know about the the spire of, of the city buried under the ice that was found here that you were told about. And mm -hmm. you've also been told about uh, about the uh, prisoner that some people blame the end of the world being on the uh, wizards of the Arcane Brotherhood and the leader of the Arcane Brotherhood locked away at the prison at Revel's End in the far, far north. You know about that as well. And that's why that's circled way up, way up yonder and we know that the well i guess the the barbarian tribes i forgot they were supposed to help us maybe figure out how to get into the underground city but now we know that there's a tower yeah you've known about the tower the barbarians would be able to tell you potentially where things are if you're looking for lost things in the glacier they follow the caribou is what you were told the right. tribes of barbarians follow along the caribou but i guess we don't so much need them anymore or maybe don't need that maybe not but right now you've learned through your other travels about there is another threat to the world ongoing with this group of dwergar that have been have infiltrated from deep from the underdark and one of them that apparently is listening to someone that he thinks is deep dura a dwergar god that the cultists of uh one of the devils told you is actually asmodeus who is seeking to destroy the world for his own powers. And they gave you this information and they gave you the psychic reading from their soothsayer because basically the enemy of my enemy. So yeah, the, yeah. you still are, they're still out there doing their thing. You kind of left them to do, although I think that sat really uneasy with granite guts to just sort of like leave the, the devil worshiping cult intact did it not granite guts uh yes granite guts at once this other stuff is done uh those i'm mopping those up yeah i i really i don't think that chapter is closed for anybody i think i think except maybe harkas uh and not to speak for everybody else but i felt a little uncomfy with it and i wouldn't be opposed to to setting that right at some point when we're not you know having the world at stake and a bunch of people try to kill us yeah, so I'm not I'm not above considering them useful tools 
I will say that. I, th uh, that, I think there that are abominations that shouldn't exist, but at the same time, I, I, I am willing to see them as tools if we could use them. Yeah, and so that's where you guys are at. That's sort of the other things that you know other than the other stuff that you've learned about as you've been going around and basically helping the citizens of the Icewind Dale, the Care Deneval, the speaker of town is basically their prisoner inside of the keep at Care Deneval, and they use him in name to basically run the town, but Care Deneval is currently being run by this devil-worshipping cult, unfortunately. They gave you information because they want their devil to be in charge. But and their castle was highlighted in one of the mirror visions of like what are threats to the world or something. It was in where should we go next? Which where should we go next? Yeah, you asked the question specifically of the mirror. The question you specifically asked was uh blah, 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 blah. hang on. You asked, where should we go from here? And what you saw was yourself flying over lake and land and glacier. And you found yourself in a city and then a tavern that was familiar looking. Mm -hmm. and you recognized that it was East Haven. And then you disappeared and you found yourself in the wilderness on a, uh, on a rock overlooking all the other land with snow blowing all around you. And you see the body of a tiefling woman uh, with uh, red skin clutching her knees frozen solid. And you actually saw this on top of the mountain mm -hmm. so you went there and you found dust crusher there a weapon that could be used to potentially destroy the evil that you're facing you asked what could we do to find something there and you found dust crusher you found yourself at the bottom of a ravine in a uh with a castle at the top of it foreboding looking uh which looked similar and uh I can't find my page where I wrote down the rest of it. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. That was one of the things that you saw in the where could we potentially go next. Alrighty. So, you've been there and you've gathered information and that's where we're at. So, that's what you know and that's what's available, but right now you know through Dearth and Nildar Sunblight, I think it was Dearth. Dearth? Uh, mm -hmm. that they are gathering up these pieces of Chardolin for some creation that they are apparently almost finished with to break destruct bring destruction to the ten towns and you guys are making your way towards where the captured Dwergar revealed the location of Zardok's fortress as told to you by the speaker of East Haven that's what you know. I hope you guys had fun. I hope that this sort of brings what's happening in the world into perspective, that you guys understand the plot and everything that's happening. Mm -hmm. I hope At you guys least are more fun. than I did. Yeah, I hope you guys are having fun. This is, uh, we are, we're really getting into it here for this, uh, for this book. We'll be, we'll be getting into Endgame before you know it. It's a great, uh, it's a great story. Good, good night, everybody. I hope that you have a good evening, and I hope that you guys had fun. And we will see you all next week. Right. Night. Awesome. Thank night. you. Good night. Good night. That is cool. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't supposed to be cool.
Uh, it was a button. It was a button. That was the doom button. <laughs> now that's creepy there. <laughs> that's what you're fighting right now. Oh, I'm muted. I've been talking for minutes. Love it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Repeat everything. Yeah, I said, it's the damnedest thing. The soundboard has an I'm going to kill you all button. This is the doom that awaits you all. This is the fate of any who dare to play what is mine. It's a, it's a little creepy. Just a, a little, little creepy. Little bit. Yeah. A little. You know, my character be noping out of there like, nope, I'm done. Going back to blacksmithing. <laughs> <laughs> Your future awaits you there.